from this video, we're finding the domain of fractional functions involving radicals. Okay, so recall that we cannot divide by zero. That's, that's always true in math. And we can't take the square root of negative numbers if we're dealing with only real numbers, which we are. Okay, so we're only interested in the numerator if there is a square root in it, such as this one and this one, this one, this one. This one, not so much because there's no variable in the top. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get it. But that's if there is a square root in the numerator, the top, um, you'll set whatever's there greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so in the denominator, if there's no square root, then you just set it equal to zero and solve for whatever's left out. If there is a square root, then you set the whole inside of the square root greater than zero. Now, that's different from what we did before when, when, we, when the square root was not on the bottom of a fraction. Okay? That's the, the reason that we're setting it only greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0, is that the denominator can't be 0. Okay? So we're going to strictly say greater than 0. Let's look at the first one. Okay? So we've got no, no square root on top, so we've got a square root on bottom. Okay? So we're going to set the inside of that. Since it's the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, just greater than 0 and solve. So we add 4 to both sides, and we get x is greater than 4. Okay, no equal to sign. Okay, so we're, we're starting with 4 with a parenthesis, and we'll go to infinity with a parenthesis. Now, again, the reason that we can't use 4, and we don't include it in here, is because if I plug a 4 in right here, 4 minus 4 gives me 0, and that gives me 0 in the denominator, which you can't have. Okay, so that's why that we don't put the equal to sign under here. Okay, on this one, you can rewrite it as square root of 6 divided by the square root of x minus 2. Okay, so we're going to not pay attention to the square root of 6 because that's just a number. If it did have a variable in it, then we would have to mess with it, but it doesn't. So we'll just pay attention to the square root on bottom, and just like the last one, we'll say x minus 2 greater than 0, strictly greater than because it's in the denominator. So x is greater than 2, so your domain is 2 to infinity with both parentheses. Okay, let's look at this one. This one does have a square root in the denominator, so we're going to have to look at the uh, numerator and the denominator. Okay, so for the numerator, we're going to say, well, it can't be negative, but it can be 0. So we'll set the x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0 which gives us, subtract the 6 from both sides, x is greater than or equal to negative 6. That's part of our domain. The other part is setting this right here uh, equal to 0. So x plus 1 is equal to 0 because we can't have the, the denominator be 0. So we subtract the 1 from both sides. We get x equals negative 1, which means x cannot be included in the domain either. So we've got all numbers that are bigger than or equal to negative 6 except negative 1. Okay, so we're going to have to write this as two different, two different intervals. We'll go from negative 6 included because there's an equal to sign to negative 1 not included because we can't, we can't be equal to negative 1. Okay, and you can either put a comma here or a union. I'll put a union. Okay, start again at negative 1 with a parentheses because we're not including it and then go out to infinity with a parentheses that's your domain on that one okay look at this one this one's similar so the top will set 3 plus x greater than or equal to 0 subtract the 3 you get x is greater than or equal to negative 3 that's part of our domain Let's look at what other restrictions we have. So the bottom has a variable in it, so we set it equal to 0. 1 plus x equals to 0. Okay. Subtract the 1, we get x equals negative 1. So I'm going to say x cannot be negative 1. So our domain is everything that is bigger or equal to negative 3 except negative 1. Okay. So we start at negative 3 with a bracket because it's got the equal to sign on it, comma, we we travel to the right until we get to negative 1, cannot include it, union, start again at negative 1, cannot include it, and then go all the way to infinity. So between negative 3 and negative 1, and between negative 1 and infinity, the only number that's left out here 
is the negative 1. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So we've got the square root of x plus 3. So we'll set that x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3, kind of like the last one. Okay, and then the bottom, negative 3x minus 7, we'll set it equal to 0 because we don't want the bottom to be equal to 0. So move the 7 over by, by adding. So negative 3x is equal to 7. Divide the 3, you get x is equal to negative 7 over 3. Okay, so all numbers bigger than negative 3 except for negative 7 over 3. Okay, so that will be written as it starts at negative 3 with a bracket, comma, negative 7 over 3, parentheses, union, parentheses, negative 7 over 3, comma, infinity. Okay, let's do one last one here. So the square root's in the numerator, so we'll say x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 7. And then we have negative 2x, negative 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. So add the 8, so you get negative 2x equals negative 8. Divide the negative 2, so you get, whoops, that's positive 8. Divide the negative 2, and you get negative 4. So x cannot be equal to negative 4. So x is greater than or equal to negative 7, except you have to leave out the negative 4. So we will start with a bracket. Write it down here. We'll start with a bracket and a negative 7, comma, negative 4, parentheses, union, negative 4 to infinity. And that's the domain.